Well, well, you had a busy day sightseeing in a new city. You constantly used navigation, took 5,000 pictures, and video called your best friend every 10 minutes. All this drained your phone battery to 12%. And you still have to do a live stream of fireworks, book a room for the night, and find your way there. You decide to try all the possible ways to save battery somehow. You shut down all the apps one by one. Bye-bye, Messenger, photo editing app, no more shopping online, force quit this and that. And your battery drops to 7%. You want to spend them wisely and Google the matter. Turns out, closing background apps eats more battery than letting them run loose. When you force quit an app, your phone spends its precious juice on closing the app and clearing it from RAM. And when you decide to open the app again, it'll spend more resources on bringing it back to life. When you leave one app and start using a different one, the first one is stored in RAM. It sits there quietly in the ready-to-relaunch in exactly the same condition state and will jump back into action without wasting any extra battery, time, or data. Your phone has its own memory management mechanisms. It'll close the apps that you haven't used for a long time or the ones that are using more battery than they should. You can help the system work smoothly and fast by not trying to do the job for the phone and let it decide which apps to keep running in the background. So you realize your phone won't last the evening, so you hop into the nearest hotel. Someone told you it helps if you drain the battery completely, but the internet says it's another myth. Batteries used in phones over 10 years ago lasted longer if you dropped them to zero before plugging the phone into an electricity source. Lithium-ion batteries used these days prefer going at somewhere between 30% and 80%. If you often let it drain completely before charging it again, you're adding unnecessary charge cycles. In that case, be prepared to replace the battery every six months or so. Now you need to charge your phone as fast as possible not to miss the fireworks. You remember everything you know about express charging and take the case off. Most of them are made of materials that stop the heat from going out. The lithium-ion battery inside your phone is most effective when it's cool. Cool. Too much heat slows it down and wears it out. The higher the temperature, the slower the charging process. There's a charging dock in your hotel room, but you don't use it. Energy transfers faster through a physical cable. Plus, all that energy spreading around on the charging pad or stand heats up your phone, which is no good. A USB port on your computer won't do your gadget any harm because it has a lower amperage, but it will do the job about two times slower. So you stick to a wall socket. Looks like it's too high and the phone will hang loose, which isn't safe. So you make a loop out of the cord and put your phone in that loop. It has to lie steadily in there not to drop out. Your phone charges by 5% and you start scrolling down your newsfeed. It's safe to use the phone while it's charging, but it'll seriously slow down the process. Instead, turn on airplane mode. It speeds up the charging process thanks to shutting down all possible radios like cellular, GPS, Bluetooth, and the like, and all sounds. Plus, if you're in an area with bad coverage, it won't waste battery looking for signal. Your iPhone charges up to 80%. Most of them have optimized battery charging on by default. It studies your charging habits and slows down charging after 80% when you're sleeping or in some other situations. While you're connected to a power source, you update your OS. The latest version will always have patches and fixes for all sorts of issues, including charging problems. And newer operating systems work better with newer technologies, like the fast charging feature on Androids. Ah, done! Time to go see the fireworks. On your way there, you run into a store that sells fast chargers. You never trusted those, but a salesperson explains they're safe for your phone. They skyrocket to 60% in 10 to 30 minutes, and then charge at a regular speed to avoid too much current running into your phone. You can also pick up a new charger. Quality third-party ones have built-in safety mechanisms, just like the original chargers, and won't do your phone any harm. If your phone can handle 12 watts, getting a 10-watt charger will speed up the process. Most phones come with 5-watt chargers. A good cable can also be a real game-changer. There are four wires inside any of them, two for data transfer and two for charging. They set the limit to charging speed. The salesperson explains that if you want to go faster, you can upgrade from a standard cable to a high-quality one. You listen so attentively that you accidentally drop some soda on your old charger. Now you have no other choice but to replace it. Even a tiny drop of water or sweat can slow down the process or ruin it all. The salesperson also checked your lightning port. If there's a buildup of dust and lint in there, just like your belly button, you can't expect it to fly at the speed of lightning anymore. He carefully removes the clog up from the port with a toothpick. You can do the same at home. Your new friend hands you a manual on how to save battery, and you study it on the go. The first thing you do is change your wallpaper. Most new phones have an OLED display. When you see a dark wallpaper, it doesn't have to waste power on lighting up black pixels. So the larger the dark areas on the screen, the less battery it eats. You also turn on dark mode. It boosts up the battery a lot. To activate it, you open settings, display and brightness, and choose the dark option. You can choose to activate it at sunset or sunrise automatically every day. Android owners can do it in display, advanced. Find device theme near the bottom of the feature list and activate the dark setting. You deactivate the automatic brightness mode in settings, accessibility, display, and text size. It's brought to you by a light sensor that spends even more power on collecting and analyzing data about the surroundings to pick the right light level. If you have an Android, you can do it in settings, display. Choose to disable auto brightness or adaptive brightness. So you manually dim your screen brightness to a comfortable level. You also shorten the auto lock time to a minimum. The sooner your screen goes off when you aren't using your phone, the less energy it's eating. You can adjust it in settings, display and brightness, auto lock. On an Android, you can find it in menu, settings, screen or display. Here, you can select the right time period under timeout or screen timeout. Boy, do I know about timeouts. The sun is about to set, but it's still super warm outside. That's not good for your battery that doesn't like extreme temperatures. That's why you shouldn't drop it in the car seat under the sun or use it when it's above 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Crazy cold isn't much better. You'll see your battery drop and then go back to normal as it warms up, but it isn't healthy. 
ring, ring. You just got a promo email. Unless you need to stay up to date for work, you should be fine with your phone fetching mail every 30 minutes, hourly, or even manual checks for a secondary email. You can set your interval in settings, accounts, and passwords under Fetch New Data. The longer the interval, the more battery you're saving. On an Android, go to the Settings menu and choose Email. In Common Settings section, tap on Settings menu. Select the account to adjust the settings, tap on Sync Settings, Sync Schedule, Set Sync Schedule, and pick the interval you like. You still have enough battery to find the best firework viewing location. It's to the right and up the hill. Wow, what a view! Now you can disable location services and start that live stream everyone has been waiting for. Now, how many functioning razor blades have you thrown out because they got oxidated and rusty? Ew. And how much usable toilet paper have you wasted because you didn't know any better? Luckily, that can change if you follow some simple tips. Now, let's say you've just arrived back from the grocery store. The bags are full of fresh produce and refrigerated items. If you're a type A person, you probably look at your empty fridge and start throwing your groceries inside without any type of organizational system. Now, if you were a type B, maybe you stop for a moment to assess the situation and try to figure out the best way to distribute your food. No matter which scenario you fit into, I bet you've been storing some essential day-to-day items in a very wrong way. Take eggs. We're used to them coming beautifully placed in their little carton packages, ready to be picked one by one and transferred to the egg compartment located on the fridge's door. But have you ever stopped to wonder whether that is really the best place to store your eggs after all? Turns out it's not the ideal place for them. The refrigerator door is one of the warmest parts of a fridge, as it is being constantly opened and closed, compromising the egg's overall quality. According to food safety experts, there is such a thing as the correct order to store food inside the fridge. Refrigeration plays a large role in keeping your food safe. The first rule of keeping food fresh is to always check the temperature in the places where you store it. The temperature inside kitchen cabinets should be between 50 degrees Fahrenheit and 70 degrees. And when it comes to the fridge, it must be around 37 degrees Fahrenheit, while the freezer should mark nothing over 0 degrees Fahrenheit. Store your refrigerated foods by cooking temperature, from the lowest temperature on the upper shelves to the highest cooking temperature on the bottom shelves. Keep ready to eat foods that need little to no cooking at all on the first fridge shelf. Then organize the rest of your shelves by cooking temperature. In this scenario, eggs would go on the third or fourth shelf, as they cook between 145 and 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Now bread. If you're a carb eater, you've certainly lost multiple packages of bread before. They are notoriously known for their super fast expiring dates and the colonies of mold that appear from what seems to be thin air and force us to throw away otherwise good slices of bread. Well, here's some good news. There is a way to keep your loaf of bread fresh for weeks and even months. And contrary to eggs and milk, the fridge is not the way to go for that to happen. Instead, separate the slices of bread and place them in a plastic bag. Now close the bag, removing all air from inside it. Be sure to leave the bag as free from air as possible. That is what will generate its safe storage. Now place the airtight bags of plastic into a freezer, and voila! Your bread can last up to three months that way. How about pickles and other condiment food jars? In order to make them last longer, store them upside down, as that will prevent mold growth. And yes, you can keep these ones on your fridge's door. There's no problem with that. Before we leave the kitchen, try this out. Whenever you buy a new nonstick saucepan, season it before actually cooking anything on it. First, you'll need oil. Rub on the edges of your pan and place it inside the stove for about 60 seconds. Let it absorb the heat, then remove the pan from the stove and let it cool down. Wipe off the excess oil, and there you have it. This way, the oil will fill in any small gaps or little pores in the pan, smoothing down the surface until it's all even. You can now expose the pan to high temperatures, and it won't get damaged. Now, let's move on to bathroom items. Toilet paper is easily one of the most wasted household items. Even if we notice it, we don't really do much to change the way we go about it. Apart from the classic over-under discussion of how we should place toilet paper, there is a less-known must-do habit that we often ignore. Just to fill you in, in case you've been oblivious to this until now, toilet paper science has long debated whether the correct way to hang the roll is with the loose end draped over the top or with the loose end hanging inside next to the wall. And as much as I bet many here already know the answer, can I have a drum roll, please? Well, you got that right if you guessed with the loose end draped over the top. It is so for the simple reason that over provides easier access to the loose hanging end of the paper and minimizes the risk of knuckle-on-wall germ gathering. Ooh. But now, toilet paper ingenuity doesn't end here. Did you know that to reduce toilet paper waste, you should squish your rolls before placing them on the bathroom hanger? By squishing, I mean laying them down horizontally and pressing them down with your hand until their aspheric center has turned into an oval, almost flattened shape. Yes, you should aim at flattening your toilet paper. And no, I haven't lost my mind. That happened long ago. The purpose of this practice is to make it harder for toilet paper to rotate. When you hang it in its usual, more circular form, it rotates too easily. This way, it lets us, the toilet paper users, effortlessly enjoy it in an unlimited fashion. Depending on the force we use to pull the paper, we will end up with twice or three times the amount of paper we needed in the first place. And sure, we could just roll the excess back. But I bet most of us here don't do that and end up just wasting huge chunks of paper. You get the idea, right? Oval-shaped paper equals more controlled rotation and thus less waste of toilet paper. 
So there. Then we have razor blades. If you're the person who never stops buying razor blades because the last one you bought five days ago is already rusty from your bathroom's humidity, maybe you'll want to listen to this one. It's not true that razor blades have such a short life expectancy. They can and should last longer in our bathroom cupboards. We just need to know how to handle them. Now, you don't have to be an expert to know that a warm and moist environment doesn't go well with razor blade steel. So, for starters, you should always dry them after using them, especially if your last usage was in the shower. Then, keep them in a cool and dry spot, maybe even out of the bathroom. They will surely last longer this way. Using a rusty blade can be especially bad for your skin, contributing to bacterial or fungal infection. So, that's a big no-no for leaving the blade face down in a puddle of shower water. Do keep that in mind. After that delicious shower, some people may head back to their bedrooms. If it's near bedtime, they might even decide to light that aesthetically pleasant nightstand candle and enjoy the most out of its pleasing white musk and warm vanilla aroma. But if your candle has been burning too quickly, try these tricks out and see if it'll last longer. You can trim your candle's wick multiple times and keep it as far away from water and moist as possible. It will guarantee that your candle's wax stays firm and steady and thus continues to burn slower for a longer period of time. A little extra tip regarding candles. Never throw away their jars once you finally burnt them out. Suppose you made it to the end of your candle. Congrats! Boil some water, wash the recipient with detergent and warm water, clean the remaining wax out of it, and reuse the jar. You can plant a succulent, store art supply, or use it for anything your heart desires. And there you have it. Little changes in habits can go a long way in your daily life. Be sure to check them out and let us know in the comments below which one was your favorite to try out. Me? I'm going to make candles out of toilet paper. We'll see how that goes. So get this, an extra hole at the upper part of the sink has multiple hidden functions. First, in case someone forgets to close the tap, the water won't overflow and the bathroom won't get flooded. Second, thanks to that hole, the water drains faster and it gives an escape for the air, helping the water flow down. Those two holes on a side of any Converse shoe are not only to let the stinky air out. Sure, breathability is important for any athlete. The second reason is that athletes lace through those holes to get a better grip. Donuts have a hole in the middle and it doesn't stand for O in donut. It's not designed for an easier grip either, though it can be quite convenient. It's actually made this way for mass baking so that they can cook all the way through evenly. Baby carrots are tiny and, unlike regular carrots, wet. Baby carrots aren't some special sort of carrots. They're actually made of regular carrots by cutting off the skin and outer layers and then polishing them to look that pretty. The problem is that they can't retain moisture. A regular carrot retains some water inside because of the layers that locks it in. Once they're chopped out, baby carrots can dry out easily, so they usually sell them in bags with some water inside. Toy stores are filled with Beanie Baby plush toys, and a detail that is even more iconic than their huge eyes is their tags saying TY. That's a small manufacturing company not so many people have heard of. Beanie Babies appeared in 1993, and they went insanely popular. TY is the name of the company, but it's not an abbreviation. It's the actual name of the company's founder, H. Ty Warner. Most metallic zippers have a hidden lock inside them to save you from awkward situations, such as an undone fly. Oh boy. Don't leave the zipper handle in an upward position. When you pull it downwards, it automatically locks. It's all thanks to those tiny grooves hidden underneath the handle. Almost any public toilet has a large gap between the floor and the door. The reason for such a zero privacy thing is to actually minimize the level of privacy and comfort so that people wouldn't stay there long and there'd be no lines. It's also easier to clean and safer if some emergency occurs. Headrests in a car are about comfort and detachable headrests are about safety. If you pull the headrest out of a seat, you'll see two bars, which are quite sturdy. If you ever get locked or trapped in a car, you can get out of there smashing the window with these bars. Many cups and mugs have little grooves on the bottom on purpose. They're designed for dishwashing machines. The grooves let the water flow and not spill over your feet when you take the cup out. Also, those grooves let the air flow, so the cup doesn't crack even if the tea is scalding. Almost all measuring tapes have a metal tip with a small slot on the end. You can use this slot to hang the tape on a nail or a screw to make measurements without anyone's help. Sometimes this tip has a row of sharp points along the edge on one side. That comes in handy when you want to leave a mark without using a pencil. Doorknobs are usually made of brass, bronze, and some other copper alloys for a reason. They have an antibacterial effect, so they stop microbes from spreading. They get rid of a range of harmful germs pretty fast within a couple of hours, but don't forget to wash your hands anyway. Grocery carts have loops for a reason. You don't want to put your jacket in a cart next to potatoes and onions. Hang it on a loop. This little hook-like thing is there to help you better organize the space in your cart. The carts also have a super handy grid. Whenever the cart's full, you just need to lift the grid and attach the shopping basket for extra purchases, placing it in between the horizontal bar above the wheels and the hooks the grid has. A point in an ointment cap is there for a reason too. Most tubes are usually sealed with foil, and it's better to avoid opening it with fingers unless you're ready to say goodbye to your nails. A point easily opens even the most safely sealed tube. Silica gel can often be found in different things you buy like bags, shoes, and many others. Don't throw it away. It's meant to absorb excess moisture, so anytime your shoes are a bit wet, just throw in a packet with silica gel. People used to co-live with rats, and these guys like gnawing on everything they see in their way, including paper. Still, rats weren't able to chew more than the space left on the margins. That black grate on a microwave isn't just some fancy decoration. It's called a Faraday shield, and it prevents the rays from escaping the microwave. It also speeds up the heating, so you can enjoy yesterday's leftovers faster. It may also block phone signals, so if you're tired of numerous calls, just put the phone into a microwave, but don't turn it on. 
All Tic Tac containers are designed to dispense one Tic Tac every time you open it. The lid has the same shape as the candy. Turn the container upside down, gently shake it, and open it slowly. You'll notice only one candy stuck between those lid grooves. So if you just open the container and shake it until five or even more candies fall into your mouth, it means you've been eating Tic Tacs wrong all this time. Those little holes in the airplane windows are designed to control the cabin pressure. They also protect the windows from fogging up as the temperatures drop and rise. By the way, the airplane window is round for a reason. This way, pressure is evenly distributed so it doesn't get deformed. Blue bristles on a toothbrush are actually an indicator that it's just about time to change the brush. As the bristles get in contact with water, the blue, or whatever other, pigment fades away. So the more you use it, the duller the color becomes. A triple handle on a jerry can is there to make it easier for two people to carry it and distribute the fuel evenly. Gas cans often have a second hole that actually needs to be uncapped too before you pour the gas. The air passage will prevent it from pouring out, so no more fuel waste. Jeans first appeared in 1873. They were invented by Jacob Davis and Levi Strauss. Davis was a tailor who was producing covers and tents, and Strauss was a businessman who, among other things, was selling cloth. The first jeans were made by Davis from denim, the fabric he bought from Levi Strauss and Co. Together, they patented the design. Blue was a standard color for denim that was dyed using an indigo dye. The blue color is a tradition that is still often followed today to replicate the original look of a pair of jeans. Jeans also have metal rivets, and they've been there from the very beginning. Jacob Davis, the man who made the first pair of jeans, added copper rivets to spots where pants were more likely to rip, flies, and pockets to make them stronger. Today, they have more of a decorative purpose since they're distinctive and traditional for jeans. Another special thing about jeans is those tiny pockets they have that seemingly serve no purpose. Well, maybe it's true now, but years ago, when many cowboys were wearing jeans, the pocket was made specifically to keep a pocket watch there. Also, back then, a pair of jeans had just four pockets. That tiny pocket, the watch pocket, two big pockets in front, and just one pocket on the back. Many zippers have the letters YKK engraved on them. It's an abbreviation that stands for the name of the company that can be translated as Yoshida Manufacturing Shareholding Company. This Japanese company is the largest zipper manufacturer in the world, so they put their initials on all the zippers they produce. That's around half of the zippers in the world. And that's why you see their zippers more often than any other zippers. Those little white golf balls have dimples all over them. It turns out they aren't there just randomly. At first, golfers were playing with a smooth ball. With time, the ball would get all punched and damaged, but also it would start to travel way further. The reason here is aerodynamics. Dimples allow the air to flow more smoothly around the ball, taking it further. So the idea was adopted and the balls got their dimples all around, allowing them to travel longer distances. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.